Welcome to the Loaded Goat. I'm Aaron. I'm Chris. Are you going to do a movie tonight? We wanted to see a um, going to see a. I guess you could call it some sort of review, some sort of review or something like that. It is uh, called a John Waters Christmas, and John Waters is the farthest thing you can imagine from the Andy Griffith Show. Yeah, I think that is correct. Yeah, and it's basically but John Waters is a Baltimore um, Baltimore native. He uh, does a show in Baltimore, does a show at the Bir- Birchmere every holiday season. And here we go. Chaos ensues. Chaos ensues. I don't know if his review or whatever it, we would call it would cause as much chaos as uh, in Mayberry as Opie's newspaper going into full circulation. Oh, the first gossip rag to hit the town. I this mean, is a good episode. This oh, it's a fun. good. It's a great episode. Yeah, I love this episode. So, uh, yeah, I, you want to just dive in? Let's let's go. Let's do All it. Right. All right, this episode first aired on March 22nd, 1965. We open with Opie coming in with his newspaper. It's a school newspaper that covers the baseball game and Karen Fulker falling on the ground and skinning her knee. Andy goes to buy buy it, offers a quarter, and it turns out Opie can't really give him change because he has no money because circulation's been slow. It's tough to start a news entity. You need a lot of that upfront capital. You do. And, you know, that was the golden age of newspapers, too. I mean, when he was he was really trying to compete with Pulitzer, Hearst. a lot of well, a lot of, you know, there might have even been more da- more than one daily newspaper in Mayberry. at the time. That's true. That's true. I know. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm getting ahead, but I've never seen such a cute little child's printing press. Yeah, it was, awesome. little, it was cute. And then Barney comes in from his hair haircut with gossip on the widow Saunders it turns out she's been stepping out on him with the door, stepping out with a dish sale tile salesman. And they were seen at the Half Moon Roadhouse sitting on the on same, the same side, of the- side eating a New York strip. Yeah, they didn't. He didn't get her in until one o'clock. And Barney says he's got her eye on. The, he's got his eye on all that insurance money. But Barney, of course, doesn't listen to gossip. He just reads his National Geographic <laughs> and he just gets lost in it. And Andy then starts playing up the gossip in the paper and then starts reading from Opie's paper. And Barney is touched and Opie comes in and Barney says he'll buy one, but circulation is still bad. And Barney says they need better news and tells Opie how he had his own column in the high school paper. And then Andy say they need broader news. And Barney says one of my favorite lines in the history of the show Karen Fulker, she may be hot copy for the fifth grade, but uptown, she don't mean a thing. <laughs> it is a great line. Yeah. Opie leaves and Andy tells Barney he doesn't remember his column, Pickups and Splashes from Floor and Pool by Barney Fife. Great Here, title. It is a great title. Apparently, it only ran once, and Barney says it was ahead of his time and too controversial. I wonder what he really covered. Let's talk about controversial childhood papers. Yeah. Well, we're we're going in on that right now. Cut to Opie and Howie going through the paper trying to figure out what they want to mimic. And they pick Mayberry after midnight, the gossip part of the paper. And um, in this episode that just moves and moves and moves, and immediately we go to Aunt B ripping on Miss Foster's food at the luncheon and Opie's eavesdropping. She's really going at it. Oh, she's so, yeah. I mean... Cut to Andy sitting with Judd and the, as the minister walks by, and they both agree his sermons are dry as dust, and how he is listening in. And Aunt B and Barney are chatting, and Harold Grigsby walks by with his new blonde wife, and blonde, Barney says her blonde hair is blonde right out of a bottle as Opie listens. I do think the way the two of them are laughing at that line is just oh, so totally, funny. Totally. Yeah. It's also funny. I was trying to figure out what it is like, but when B- Barney knows he has a good punchline, so he just keeps fr- he just keeps saying it over and over yeah. and over again. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like Polly Walnuts telling a joke and saying, Hey, did you hear what I said, Tony? A tone. Um, you know, it's the exactly. same thing. Yeah. And so Howie and Opie print their paper and bring it to breakfast for Aunt B, Barney, and Opie. And they're giving them to everyone in town for free to draw up interest. And Opie leaves and they read the headlines and scramble to find Opie as we go to commercial. Things are getting messy. Things are getting messy. And so after the break, Andy asks Opie where the papers went, and they went to three streets. 
and they send Opie to go get Howie and go to get the papers. And Aunt B goes to Miss Foster's. She ends up agreeing to have to go to dinner. Barney grabs Mr. Grigsby's paper, but runs into the two of them as he leaves. And Mr. Grigsby threatens to beat Barney up. I, I'd say Mr. Grigsby, I hope he's got money. He's not an attractive man, and he's not a very nice man. No, he also felt like your like classic uh, like character actor from this. It was like way overacted. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing here, Mr. Griggs? Yeah, I mean, he's also kind of like, you know, a guy like that. I've been binge watching. You're gonna up the old unsolved mysteries from the '80s. Okay. Harold Grigsby would be Robert Stack would be talking about Harold Grigsby and how he's on the run because he killed his third third ex wife because he was so jealous. You you know. Yeah. Yeah. No. I hear yeah. you. Yeah. So, but the best scene is when Andy shows up at the minister's house house and he asks Andy to teach Sunday school because his sermon certainly wouldn't be dry <laughs> as dust. I think that is so well leveraged. Oh yeah. Perfect. I think he could. I mean, the, the what I'm what I am uh, shocked is by is I'm like, you only ask for a month. You could have gotten a year. I know. Totally. Well, I kind of thought yeah. once you're in it, it's just going to continue. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I don't know if you've ever volunteered on church, church councils or anything like that. Once they get you, it's, uh, once they get you into volunteering, it's hard to, it's hard to get hard to just say, you know what, I'm just going to go sit in the pew on Sunday. You know, it's yeah. hard. It's hard to do that. That makes sense. Yeah. So Andy apologized. A taste of that power. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, running a, um, you know, cheering a meeting where people are talking about what should we you know, what color should we paint the uh, fellowship, Paul? That is, that is, you know, you f- you're feeling like Lyndon Johnson right there when you're really trying to push things through, yeah. So later there, um, Andy apologizes and the minister shrugs it off and says he came out ahead because he's got Andy cover in Sunday school. And then back at Howie's, they've got all the papers and Andy explains why they shouldn't do this. And Andy just says they're not to do this because I mean, at the end of the day, you know, he doesn't really have much of a leg to stand on, and he's because I mean, people do this kind of stuff all the time. I mean, it's kind of like um, if you've got a relative and they watch cable news, and then you're posting YouTube videos saying outlandish things, and they're kind of like, "You're not supposed to do stuff like that." And you're like, "What do you mean? You're watching cable news?" Yeah. I mean, so it would be almost like you got to use brute. So Andy just has to basically use almost the equivalent of brute force to just get Opie to stop. Totally, totally. And later, they're in the front room, and it looks like everything is okay. Opie apologizes and mentions there was a second paper that was now at the dump. And I love this. Picked it up and saw it on the truck already. (laughs) Andy leaves to go on duty. And then at the dump, we see Andy looking for the papers. Barney then shows up, and so does Aunt B. And they all say they want to make sure the papers were properly destroyed. And Andy finds them. Like this dump, though, this is totally just like the end of a road, and they've got like a burning, you know, dumpster fire. It's not like it's actually a dump. No, and it's it's really one of these things. It is probably one of the most organized dumps I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> I mean, how many times? I mean, you, you know, when you go to a dump, how many times or a landfill? And they said, "Oh yeah, you just we, we'll just go find it at the landfill." I mean, that would just be like, well, good luck. I mean, you know, you're not going to have any luck there. That's where the movie Wally starts. That's true. That is where it starts. But it's a that is a that is one unkempt dump. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So they all say they want to make sure the papers are properly destroyed. And Andy finds them and they start to burn them, but they all look at each other and Andy hands them each a paper and they start to go through them as we go to commercial. All sorts of good gossip. All sorts of good gossip. <laughs> this episode was produced by Pod Machine. They do a great podcast and a great rate. I was fortunate to get started on this a few years ago, um, and I've just been very, very pleased with it ever since. I mean, they can, you know, they will edit your podcast. They will uh, do artwork for your podcast. They'll do the YouTube videos for the podcast, and they have a very quick turnaround time um, once you upload all your material. So I highly recommend it. I'm pro pod in general. I love bean pods. I like pod hotels. I like pod apples maybe but you know what pods i like best pod machines pod machines me too me too i like them better than podcasts i honestly don't even really like podcasts that much so i'm i'm just thankful that you're here 
Why do you do this podcast? <laughs> to see your dimples, baby. To see my dimples. Well, and uh, if you really push hard, podcast, my pod machine might be able to give you some dimples. I don't know. So <laughs> go to podmachine.com to learn more and enter Loaded Goat at checkout for a 10% discount. And that's spelled just like Loaded Goat. Uh, in the epilogue, Opie comes in with his news new paper. Apparently, it's a gossip rag about the fifth grade, which fits Andy's parameters, and we close. I think, honestly, Opie's going to get into some fights with this with this new paper. I think so, too. I was a little disappointed at the end of this, where it was like, typically, I feel like Andy would be like, now, Opie, we didn't quite learn the lesson here, right? But it's like, he's still not being a nice boy. I think this is an episode of this is just like let's go with full on silliness as opposed to as opposed to learning, which is really what this is all about. Yeah, I think you're right. How many whistles would you give this? This is a niner for me. Oh, this is a tenner for me. Oh, it is. It's a full ten. It's so it's fun. Full, yeah, it's a fun. Yeah. Yeah. Any final thoughts? No, I hope that I would love to see the gossip that you'd be able to pull out of your your hat as a as a child. I feel like you've got a good ear to the ground. I mean, I could, but not on this podcast. <laughs> we don't want to air any dirty laundry today. No. And I um I realize uh folks are if folks are like you're only spending about 10 or 11 minutes on a 10 whistle show. But I have to say, it's it's New Year. It's your this this podcast dropped on New Year's Day, and this holiday season has been kind of hectic. So I apologize for the for the short for the shortness of this episode. I think people are going to love the brevity. They might. I mean, nobody really wants to listen to us talk that talk that long. <laughs> exactly. Well, thanks for listening. Check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. And if you think about it, subscribe. Next week, we'll do Aunt Bee's Invisible Bow. Until then, Christopher, Karen Folker, she may be hot copy for the fifth grade, but uptown she don't mean a thing. <laughs>